I'm Debbie Bailey and I am with the Tulsa Fire Museum Board. So I'm a chairperson for that and we're going to present on the Fire Museum. Uh, thank you. So letting all of you in on this, we are, the op we are currently operating under the 501c3 nonprofit umbrella of the Tulsa Community Foundation. Our vision is to showcase the significance of the Tulsa Fire Alarm Building at 1010 East 8th Street and we're going to convey the pride, the dedication, and the tradition that is the Tulsa Fire Service. Uh, it will be a distinctive designation, I can assure you. This is the fire alarm building, as it was in 1934, and it served as our central dispatch station for almost 50 years until 1984. Uh, it then became vacant and fell into disrepair. It went under extensive renovations in 2005, and it is an Art Deco jewel. It's been marketed as a part of our Art Deco history, and it's in pristine condition. Um, it's worthy of preservation, and it is on the National Registry of Historic Places. So I think you'll find it gets as much draw as the fire service is going to give it as with the Art Deco that it uh, is for Tulsa. Um, our campaign was to raise $1 million by the end of the year and open the doors to the public. After just six months, we've reached a halfway point. We have secured the building. We're moving ahead. We're a viable project. Um, the building is, is now um, under our care, and uh, we've had generous donors to do that. We've secured the historical artifacts and photographs that go with our story, and we're hoping that you all, uh, from your uh, offices will assist us with that, with that, your current uh, uh, lantern and call back box that you admire every day. It's very valuable. Yes. <laughs> high, high price. <laughs> well, and I think when the other one arrives, it will make a nice pair, so. Ours um, becomes that much more valuable when the other one arrives, <laughs> though. Um, we're going to generate revenue by um, making this a multi-purpose building. Um, we've, we've already offered it as a private party use and have two weddings booked, um, a convention, a memorial, and those aren't firefighter weddings. Those are outside of the firefighter realm. Um, we continue to develop it with the unique, um, constructing unique interactive and educational displays. We're going to begin the groundwork for the patio that will be on the west side. And finally, we're going to hire a professional staff uh, that can adequately pursue our mission and manage our business plan. And that will be motivated, energetic people uh, to present to all types of, of uh, those people that will walk through our doors. Uh, with the Vision 2025 funding, we will continue the Phase 1 development. This we will ask to redefine the end of 8th Street at Madison, which is currently a dead end, underutilized space um, that people turn around in all the time. Um, we will add shade trees to keep people cool, also add beautification to the area, and an iconic art piece that will in itself be an attraction, something similar to Pops, a huge helmet or huge hoses. So um, we'll put that on the end that can be visible from the end of 8th Street and also draw from there, as well as the expressway, that 7th Street exit, although we don't want to be people turning and looking at it and causing any accidents up there. Um, the enhancements would be part of phase one at a total cost of approximately $235,000. Inside our fire alarm building, we will go from uh, this to this. And we appreciate James Boswell has done a great job, our architect, in rendering some of the building, um, making it inviting as a museum sp space and not a sleeper museum, just artifacts behind glass. It will have a wow factor, drawing people in and making it inviting to come and see. The flame that you see is not an actual flame, obviously, <laughs> but it is a faux flame developed out of a company out of California that it has no fog feature and no heat feature. So it leaves us a very teachable moment for people when they come in, draws them in, and we can talk about, hey, fire, friendly, and also respect. So generate some conversation that way. Um, we can offer something, what, what, what we did was ask ourselves, what can we offer that's different and unique? How can we speak to all ages and backgrounds? And how can we educate and enrich the lives at a minimum cost? So we will provide a self-guided tour 
that will be along the walls as you see the numbers of the, the different years that will tell interesting parts of our history. Not just the facts, but the interesting tidbits that we've found in our books uh, that the chiefs have written and notes uh, to their men and things. The, di the displays in the center will offer a unique and appealing um, center circle art piece. So not only things like a Lego touchable piece of art or string art or glass blown or iron or aluminum or hoses hanging off the ceilings, but those interchangeable pieces will come and attract people for touchable art. Even the bathrooms here, I assure you, are going to be worth seeing. We will hopefully, we will hit, hear kids going, come on, you've got to come in the bathroom, mom and dad. It's so cool. Um, every space will be a display space. Private parties can also be held here. The rolling displays will go into an adjacent room, which will also hold private parties not only for adults uh, in the upper level, but kids, birthday parties for kids in the lower level. There'll be a separate classroom there to teach fire and life safety skills of various sorts. Um, phase two will be a 5,000 square foot addition to the side of the original building. It would house antique apparatus and provide extra offices and allow us climate controlled storage. We will add a large patio to the serve the neighborhood, the trail and the museum um, and make it an interactive pocket park with benches and bike racks and things that might mimic the iconic sculpture that we plan to put at the end of the street. The economic impact and sales tax generated will come from enriching the quality of life through education, history, art in a family-friendly atmosphere. It will be accessible and inviting to all economic levels. It will provide field trip opportunities for schools, encourage people to get out and come out of the house and come and visit, and it will be an integral component of the revitalization already taking place in the area with the Route 66 initi initiative and the Pearl Street uh, initiative that it has taken pace, place. Um, and in conclusion, it promotes and revitalizes the inner city communities and it can be reached by mass transit and by the bike path and walkability to downtown. Um, and it's a very family en enrichment for the area. So thank you for the opportunity.